Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to this new episode of Swift Quiz. This time, we're going to be talking about the subtleties of mutating methods inside value types. So let's get started and take a look at the code. You can see I've defined a struct called value. Inside this struct, we find one stored property, which is a counter of type int. And we can remark that this property has been declared as a let constant. Then we can see I've started to implement a mutating method called increment counter. And so the question I want to ask you is, do you think it's actually possible to implement the method increment counter in a way where the method will be able to increment the value stored inside the property counter, even though that property has been declared as a let constant. And I really like this question because if you don't know the answer, it's actually quite hard to infer what it could be. Because on the one hand, we have this property that is defined as a let constant. So it seems logical that the value inside the property should not be allowed to change. But on the other hand, we have this method that's been marked as mutating. And so we might also think that maybe there is a way for such a mutating method to be able to update the value in the property counter, even though that property is a let constant. You know, I'm always super curious to discover what your original answer was. So before I give you my answer, please let me know in the comments. And so it's time for me to actually give you the answer. And that answer is that it is indeed possible to implement the mutating method increment counter in a way where this method will be able to increment the value stored in the property counter, even though that property has been declared as a let constant. But of course, there are going to be some subtleties because if I try to implement the straightforward approach, so that would be doing self.counter plus equal one, I do get a compiler error and the error says left side of mutating operator isn't mutable, counter is a let constant. But the thing is, there is another syntax we can use inside this method to increment the value of the property counter. And to guide you towards this syntax, I'm going to write some code outside of my struct. First thing, I'm going to create a value and store it inside a variable. You can notice that since I have declared my variable as a var, I can perfectly call the mutating method increment counter on it. But let's put that method aside just for a moment. And instead, I want us to focus on how we could update our variable in order to set a new value to its property counter. Of course, just like we've seen before, if I try to just increment the counter by doing plus equal one, I'm still going to get a compiler error because counter is still a let constant. However, we can also notice that value is not a let constant because value has been declared as a var. And as a consequence of that, I'm totally allowed to assign a new value to my variable. And as you can see, when I assign that new value, I can provide a different value for the property counter. And through that new syntax, I can finally increment the value stored inside the property counter. Before I go any further, I'm actually going to print the value stored inside the counter just to make sure that everything is working as expected. So let me pull the console up a little bit and then run the code. And as we can see, everything has worked as expected. There is indeed the value Q stored inside the property counter of my variable. And so thanks to this syntax, I was indeed able to update the value stored inside a property that was declared as a let constant. And so we are almost there. The question we need to answer now is how can we use this same syntax inside the mutating method? In the code I've written down here, the syntax worked because I had this variable value that I could use to assign a new value. And well, as it turns out, inside a mutating method, there is indeed an equivalent variable that we can assign to, and that variable is none other than self. So let me update the code to use self instead of value. And now my mutating method increment counter has been successfully implemented. This method uses a technique that is known as reassigning self. And while it might look a bit weird at first glance, it's actually totally allowed inside a mutating method of a value type to assign a new value to self. But thanks to that code I took the time to write, we understand that this syntax is actually not weird at all. 
It's just a way for Swift to give a mutating method the same set of possibilities to mutate a value than when you are directly dealing with a variable like I was in that code down here. And before we end, I've just realized I've completely forgotten to run the code to actually make sure that this syntax does work. So I'm going to run the code now. And so if everything is working as expected, the counter should now hold the value free at this point in the code. So let's run the code and we'll see what's the result. And you can see we have the confirmation that the value stored inside the counter is indeed free. And so it confirms that this syntax is indeed working exactly as it should. All right, that's all for this video. Before I forget, the first time I learned about this trick of reassigning self was on the website of obj.io. So I've put a link to the website in the description. Make sure you check it out. They really have some awesome content. Thank you for watching and see you next time.